Alrighty. So who here's gotten the start on project one so far? All right, a few people have uh, definitely seen a couple of submissions come in. Good, all right, so uh, you guys, I'm gonna be relying on you to point out anything in here that you don't understand. Everyone else, um, if you don't understand something, raise your hand. Um, if I don't get at least 10 questions over the course of the lecture, I will not answer any further questions about project one. So it's on you guys. Okay, so uh, today we're gonna be talking about uh, project one, basically taking everything that we've covered over the past couple of lectures and um, tying it back together into this one uh, specific project, evaluating SQL queries. Now, everything that I'm covering here is uh, covered in very nice detail in the textbook. Uh, chapter 5 has a bunch of stuff on uh, bag relational algebra and extended relational algebra. Um, chapter 6 has a whole bunch of stuff on SQL. Uh, and chapter 15 covers uh, query evaluation. And the first couple of uh, sections of each of these are basically all you need to implement the project, give or take. So, all right, let's start this off with uh, kind of what kind of interface I'm expecting from you guys. So here I have my little uh, terminal window. Uh, yeah, I have my little terminal window. And uh, at some point I'm going to, uh, basically what happens when you hit the submit button on the website uh, is this. The, uh, the server is basically going to download all of your code and then it's going to, uh, it's, you guys can't see that, can you? Let's mess with the lighting a little bit. Uh, promise me you won't go to sleep, because I'm pretty sure... Yeah, nap time, huh? All right. Uh, I, I apologize. Please don't, uh, please don't go to sleep. If you do, it's your loss, because I'm not going to be covering this again. Okay, so... What the, bat, what the server is going to do is it's going to download your code, it's going to compile all of it and put it in a directory called build, and then it's going to run that command more or less. A um, couple of things to point out about the command. Uh, all of the Java files are going to have been compiled. I'm basically going to take every single Java file that's in your repository, or um, if you have a source directory, SRC, it'll grab all of the, source, uh, the Java files in that directory. It'll compile them all. It'll put them in a directory called build, and then uh, use that to run your code. Uh, you don't need build files, you don't need anything. It'll just take all of the Java files, uh, either uh, in your source directory if you have it, or in the, uh, the entire repository if you don't. Uh, the other thing I want to point out, uh, there is a data directory. So this is where all of, the, uh, all of your initial data files are going to live. Um, they, uh, this is going to be passed to you as a command line argument, dash, dash, data, and then a path. Uh, that path is uh, where all of the data files are going to live. Um, there are going to be a set of SQL files that, uh, one or more SQL files that contain create table statements and select statements. Um, the select statements, pretty self-evident. Uh, the, sta uh, the create table statements are a little bit uh, weird because you're not actually creating a table. Uh, these are just here for the purpose of defining the schema of uh, the data files. Uh, we'll go over what the data files look like right now. Uh, so the data files are going to look basically like what your output is expected to look like. Um, a set of pipe, vertical pipe character uh, delimited um, files. Essentially CSV files except instead of commas uh, vertical pipe characters. Um, all of your source data is going to be in this format. All of your um, output should also be in this format. Yes? Or will there be only one instance of, for one uh, create table? 
The question is, will there be multiple create tables? Will there be alter tables? Will there be any kind of manipulation of the schema or the data files? And the answer is no. Every time your code is executed, you will get exactly one instance of each create table statement. You may get multiple create table statements, but they'll be for different tables. Does that answer your question? Ah, I see. So the, the question is, will there be one statement per file? Uh, we'll go over how you can... Um, there may be multiple statements per file. Just treat each file as essentially... A uh, if you get multiple files, treat them as a concatenation. So process all of the commands in the, first, uh, in the first file, then process all of the commands in the second file, and so forth. No, um, my question is, say for example, for a table like R, mm -hmm. Will there be only one create table statement for R? Yeah. Um, so if there are, yes, every relation, every table will have exactly, every table that is used in the query. Uh, so a file contains both create table and select statements. I'll give you an example in a couple of slides, but a file contains both, uh, can contain both create table and select statements. The suggested way of processing it is every time you encounter a create table statement, store all of the, the metadata that you get out of that create table statement. And then once you're processing a select statement, use the metadata that you've stored. And you're guaranteed to always have the create table statements come before any select statements that use it. So you can... Pr you won't get... Uh, you will get exactly one create table statement for each... Uh, for each relation in your base data. You may get a create table statement for R and one for S, but you won't get two for R. Across all the SQL files. Across all of the SQL files. <coughs> Excuse me. Your code will get executed multiple times, and across executions, you may get multiple, uh, multiple copies of the same create. You will get one copy of the create table statement every time your code is executed in across all of the files that that execution gets. Basically, there's no different uh, treat. If you get multiple files, just execute all of the uh, commands in one, then all of the commands in the other. Uh, treat it as basically one big SQL file, um, and that one file will contain uh, a, at most one create table for each relation. Okay. Um, any other questions about the expected uh, about the expected interface? Yeah. Um, so the question is, uh, can you get, can you use the data directories that I provided uh, in the project, uh, the data files that I provided in the project description, the example project um, data and SQL files, and just pass them into the, uh, ex would you expect the same syntax? And the answer is yes. Um, you don't have, uh, you, you haven't gotten all of the queries that we'll be testing with, um, and there are queries that you've gotten that we won't be testing with, but if you pass all of the queries that, um, all of the example queries that we've given you, then um, everything else should work. Yeah? Um, yeah, sorry, that, um, that should have been on there. So you get JUnit, you get uh, uh, you get, well, if you want to use JUnit, you get that. Uh, JSQL parser and expression lib. 
Okay, so let's uh, actually go through, uh, let's go through this process from end to end and see where all of the things that we've picked up uh, come up. So everything starts with a SQL file. That SQL file is going to look a little bit like this. So there might be a create table statement, uh, there might be a select statement. Uh, this, in fact, is uh, NBA01, uh, the example, one of the examples that you were given. Simple create table, simple select statement. So the first, what's the first step? You, you, you've been answering a lot. JSQL parser. Okay, so we need to call JSQL parser on this data file. Um, and the simplest way to do this, uh, JSQL parser defines a class called ccjsql parser. Instantiate a copy of that. It'll take a buffered reader or an IO stream or sorry, an input stream, and then this uh, method has a uh, function called statement, uppercase S, uh, and every time you call statement, it will either return an instance of a JSQL parser statement, uh, or it will return null. If it returns null, you've reached the end of the file. Any questions? Okay, so you get a bunch of statements and you process each of them. So for this particular file, you get two statements. Uh, you'll get one statement for the create, table uh, the create table block, and you'll get one for the select block. Let's take a look at each of these in turn. So the create table statement uh, is going to be an instance of the class create table. Um, and it basically tells us three things. Number one, that there is a table, sorry, four things. Uh, number one, that there is a table that is called players. Uh, this table has seven attributes with a schema as given over there. And, uh, this, uh, and that there is a data file called players.dat in the data directory that you are passed on the command line. Now, what should you do with this? Save it for later, because just looking at the create table statement, you don't really know uh, what else to do. So you're going to have to keep track of all of this information somewhere. Now, players.dat is going to live in the data directory, and it's going to look uh, basically like this. Again, you have an uh, one of the examples. Uh, this is precisely one of the examples uh, that you were given, uh, that you are given on uh, the project one write-up. So this is essentially a CSV file. Uh, the only difference is that rather than using uh, regular CSV, you've got vertical pipe characters. Um, the simplest way to access each line, I would suggest using a buffered reader and then using um, Java, uh, Java strings define a split method uh, that partitions, uh, that will get you each uh, attribute of the row. Uh, one thing to note, uh, Java split uses regular expressions. The vertical pipe character is a res uh, has a special meaning for regular expressions, so you'll need to escape it. Okay, any questions on the data file, on the create table statement or anything I've covered up to this point? Yes? So uh, They will either have been created in this, uh, so the question is, uh, when you get a select statement, uh, will the create table statements exist in the same file? They will exist either in the same file or a file earlier on the command line. So if you process the statements in order according to the command line, um, the create table statement will have, uh, will have been present by the time you get to a select statement. Does that answer your question? Uh, there's a question in, same question? Okay. Yes. Uh, so the question is, do you need to validate the select statement based on the schema? Um, while very good, while good defensive programming practice says that you should, um, all of the you will you're not being tested on, or the the code your code isn't being tested on whether it can debug SQL properly. It's uh, being tested on whether it can execute C, uh, SQL properly. Uh, so, again. While I would encourage you to validate things because it'll make your lives easier, uh, you're not going to get incorrect SQL. 
Does that address your question? Um, any other questions? Great. So let's move on to uh, let's move on to the select statement. So the select statement is going to uh, come in as an instance of uh, the class select, and that uh, class is either going to be uh, an instance of a uh, sorry select has a uh, method called get select body and the select body is either going to be an excuse me an instance of uh, union or it's going to be an instance of plain select so at the root of your parse tree you're either going to have a union of plain selects or you're just going to have a single plain select now uh, union uh, well, that's just essentially going to be a, an array of plain selects. The interesting thing here is uh, plain select, so let's look at that. <coughs> now, for this specific query, there are three methods that are relevant uh, get from item, get where, and get select items. Uh, these return the, uh, the first relation in the from list, uh, the where clause, and uh, the select items. Uh, or the, the, uh, a list of items in the select clause um, uh, yeah, uh, for the first from item the, uh, respectively. All right, now, is this enough uh, for us to execute this? Yeah, I mean, you could probably write some code to execute that specifically. But trust me on this, don't try that. If, if you're thinking of executing that SQL query directly, um, you can, and in fact, you can probably pull it off for this project. But when it comes to project two, uh, you will be in much pain. So trust me, right now, you wanna make, uh, you wanna do uh, the, the smart thing for, for later on, and don't try and evaluate the SQL directly. Instead, uh, implement a uh, tree structure, or what, uh, what the reference implementation does, is implements a, a tree structure that uh, captures a good chunk of relational algebra. So uh, we talked about all these operators last class. There's a couple here on this list that you don't, strictly speaking, need. Um, so why would we not need just regular projection? Right, so extended projection does everything that projection does and more. So we can uh, emulate anything we need projection for. Um, outer joins, well, you're not gonna get any queries with outer joins because those are a pain in the butt to implement. What about uh, aggregation? Why might you not need aggregation? Grouping, yeah, so the grouping operator, if you have no group by terms, you end up with a single uh, result row, and that's essentially what aggregation is. Now, the reference implementation actually does have a separate aggregate and grouping operator, uh, but if I was writing it again, I probably wouldn't do that. What about distinct? Why, why can we skip distinct? The grouping can do it too. Uh, so grouping captures both the distinct and the aggregation operator. Now, I mean, these are just suggestions. Uh, your, uh, this is what the reference, or this is either what the reference implementation does uh, or what I wished I had done when I wrote the reference implementation. So uh, bear that in mind, but that's basically, uh, I would encourage you to implement some sort of structure that, uh, that has all of these operators as classes. Okay, now let's assume that that's what you decide to do. Yes? Uh, why not projection? Why skip projection? Oh, um, so... The... Uh, so at the end of last class, we talked about uh, the extended projection operator. Okay. Did... All right. Any other questions?
Great. All right. So going back to our select query, we have a get from item, we have a get where, and we have get select items. There's a handful of other functions. Uh, we'll talk about a few of them, but this is basically what's required for this specific query. So how would we go about translate? Let's say that we had a uh, projection operator implementation, a selection operator implementation, <coughs> excuse me, a select operator implementation, and a table scan, or uh, just something that parses the CSV file. Uh, how would we go about translating uh, the select statement into a, a, an operator? Let's let someone else uh, have, uh, have some fun. Now, I know there's a few of you who know this because I went over this at the end of la uh, outside the, the room at the end of last class. Who here was part of that? Okay. Yeah. So what's the first step? Okay. So I need to start with uh, the relation. Everything starts from the base data. Now, in this case, I have a single relation. Um, that relation is going to be returned by the from item. So, let's say, so I have one of my operators uh, here is the relation operator. And it basically says, read me all of the values out of that relation. So, step one, build a relation operator around whatever uh, body.getFrom item returns. All right, so I've started with the base data. What do I need to do next? Okay, so there's a bunch of rows in this base data that I don't need. There's a selection predicate. So body.getWhere is going to give me that selection predicate. So I can build up an operator based on whatever I'd gotten before and this where clause that I just picked up. Now, uh, something to bear in mind, the original query was a relational operator. It was a, just a relation. The select predicate is another relational operator. So I can just kind of gradually build up my stack of operators. I start from the, the very bottom with the relation, and now I replace whatever query I had with the original relation, uh, except now filtered. Next step. What's the next step? Projection. So I need to take those select items, and I need to build an extended projection operator out of it. And once again, the extended projection operator is just another uh, operator. So I can basically just gradually, progressively build up this relational operator each time keeping track of where I am in the tree. I start at the base relation, then I replace the operator with the selection predicate applied to whatever I had before, and then I replace that with the projection operator applied to whatever I had before. So that gives me a simple tree structure, uh, starting with starting with players uh, and going through to the where clause. So updating our little diagram on the left there, the create table statement goes into the saved schema, the select statement goes into a relational algebra tree. Now, one thing to bear in mind, uh, you'll probably, in doing this translation, you'll probably need to reference into that uh, saved schema, at least a little bit. <coughs> Okay. Any questions up to this point? Yeah. So the question is, what will happen if you have a list of relations in the from clause? Uh, I have an example in a few slides, but the short answer is get from item always returns exactly one relation, and that can be the start. And then there's another uh, method called get joins that returns everything else, or that returns a list of join expressions. And each of those join expressions uh, basically 
you can do something similar with. Uh, again, I'll, I'll do an example of that in a little, uh, a couple of slides. I just want to kind of get, go end to end with this, this slightly simpler example. Okay, what next? So we have this nice relational al algebra tree, super simple. Now what do we do? Hmm? What do you mean by expressions? Uh, what do you mean by uh, which expressions? Okay, so you get a bunch of operators. Now you need to evaluate those relational operators. So, how do we do that? So, what did we? Uh, what was the the method we talked about Friday? Get next. So we build a bunch of iterators. Now, there were suggestions of um, reading multiple uh, rows at, the, at a time. Uh, I would discourage you from trying to evaluate everything in, in bulk using each operator's one step of the computation. I encourage you to use uh, iterators simply because Well, like we talked about on Friday, doing full uh, copies of the relation tends to be quite slow. Okay, so you read one row at a time. Uh, you build up a set of iterators. Those iterators are going to read from the data files, and they'll probably also <coughs> they'll probably also uh, require some little bits and pieces of this, uh, the schema that you saved earlier. Do a quick example of one of these. How would we implement, uh, let's say, projection as an iterator? Yeah? Uh, okay. Uh, all right, time to wake up. Let's give ourselves a little space, and all right, so we're implementing this iterator, and this iterator needs a couple of things. So uh, let's, let me give you the, the skeleton of this. Uh, skip open for now. So first off, the projection iterator is going to need some information. What is it going to need? Hmm? Okay, so it needs uh, the output expressions. Okay, what else? Where is it going to, where is it going to get its data from? Uh, there's some mumbling there. Can you speak up? Okay, so there's an input operator. Oh, sorry, in, input iterator. All right, so get next. How are we going to uh, implement this? Hmm, let me give you a... Oh. Uh, ignore that for the moment, but just assume you have an array of attributes you want to return. So what does get next need to do to produce one tuple? Oh, 
come on. You guys are, yeah. Okay, so it gets uh, it gets a row as input. And Okay, so now I uh, I have a bunch of expressions and I want to evaluate those expressions, right? So um, for uh, for each expression, you evaluate the expression. Um, okay, now this just so you don't have to suffer through my horrible handwriting there. Uh, here's a slightly cleaner uh, way of doing that. So you're going to need a source, you're going to need um, the output expressions, and you're going to need uh, then every time you return, uh, of every time uh, get next is called, you get one row from the, the source using get next, uh, and then you evaluate each of the expressions. Now, as much as I'd love to torture you with another uh, component to this programming project, uh, this isn't a compiler or uh, programming languages class, so uh, you're getting a library that will do that evaluation for you. Um, <coughs> so, JSQL parser, basically throughout, it uses this uh, it uses this uh, interface called expression. An expression is basically implement, implemented by any kind of arithmetic, boolean, or uh, string operation that you can think of. This shows up in the where clause, this shows up in the having clause, and this shows up in each select uh, expression item. So the evaluator library basically works off of this. Basically, now one specific type of expression in JSQL parser, or one specific interface in JSQL parser, is leaf value. So leaf value, um, there are a bunch of these uh, classes that implement leaf value. Uh, Boolean, long, double, string, date, timestamp, and time. <coughs> Don't worry about the last two, they're not relevant for the project. Each of these is both an expression and a leaf value. And the, what a leaf value is, it's just a concrete thing, uh, an object, uh, n something that doesn't need further evaluation, either a Boolean, a long, double, string, or date. So um, here's your quick 30-second primer on how to use uh, the evaluation library, because it's really quite straightforward. Uh, the evaluation library defines a abstract class called eval, and eval has an abstract method eval column. You implement that to reference the source data. So if I have a column, uh, if I have, let's say, select A plus B, eval column will get called once for A and once for B, and you're expected to return another leaf value. So if, uh, if I was, there needs to be more board space here. Uh, uh. So let's say I have a relation R, A, B, one, two, three, four, when I get to this row and you call uh, eval on an expression that looks like uh, A plus B, which is actually going to be add of column A comma column B, your library is basically going to get called once for A, at which point you should return one, and then once for B, at which point you should return two, and eval lib will handle all of the nitty gritty in between. Uh, it will return three, or it will return a primitive value, a leaf value uh, for three. 
When you get to the next row, same deal. You call it once, except you need to return three for the, uh, for the A column, four for the B column. Is that clear? Any questions up to this point? Yeah. Yes, so you'll need to know the schema information of the input to the operator. Um, there's some more clever ways of doing it, but this is essentially what the, op, uh, what the reference implementation does. Any other questions? All right, uh, so just to recap, you have two libraries, JSQL parser and expression lib. Um, JSQL parser will give you the parse tree and expression lib uh, takes a JSQL parser expression and evaluates it for you, uh, assuming that you can, provide, uh, you can provide it with a way of dereferencing columns, which are the one thing that it can't do. Well, it can't do nested sub-expressions either. Um, those, will, uh, those don't come up in the project, at least not project one. Okay. Any further questions up to this point? Yes. Okay. So the where clause is an expression, the having clause is an expression, and every select expression item uh, has an expression for the corresponding entry. Does that answer your question? Uh, the question was uh, where are the expression objects coming from? Any other questions? All right, um, so let's, uh, there was a question on this earlier. So what happens, uh, that was a very straightforward example, um, and it only had one source relation. So what happens if you have multiple source relations? Well, first off, there is now uh, going to be a new method uh, that you need to work with called get joins. So get joins is going to return a list of join objects, and those join objects are each going to contain a bunch of metadata about how the join is implemented. For project one and probably most of the rest, uh, you can ignore most of those. The interesting thing is that there's going to be a right-hand side item that uh, represents the thing that is being joined. In this case, you're going to get one join uh, that joins S onto whatever you've gotten before. And uh, if you had more relations, you'd get additional join elements, uh, each adding the, the previous thing. So how do you use this? Well, um, how would my relational algebra tree look like in this query? So I've got my S down here as before. I've got my project. I've got my select. Those are connected. And if I didn't use the join, I basically have that, project, select, join. That's obviously not right in this case. What do I need to do? I need, so I need R in here. And how do I link that into the rest of the tree? Join, or, well, actually, cross product. So where would I stick that? Well, immediately after the, uh, the from, but before I start processing selects, I would basically loop over every single join and create a cross product operator. So I start with S. Mm. Kind of illustrating how this works from the ground up. I start with S, then, and this is kind of my, my record, then I build a cross product, I link it to what I had before, and now this is my root. Now I need to implement a selection on this, implement that, and now this is my root. 
and keep going as long as I have more operators on top to add. And in this case, end up with this nice uh, tree. OK, um, any questions up to this point? Uh, so the question is, for project one, do you just need to implement uh, cross product uh, or more precisely nested loop join? And the answer is yes. Uh, for, uh, you are not expected to implement any kind of more advanced join uh, for project one. Um, rephrasing that slightly, the reference implementation for project one uses nested loop join and nothing else. So. Uh, you're basically, the, the, the bar for an A is nested loop join. If you want to go beyond that, uh, there will be a leaderboard, um, but the bar for an A is a nested loop join. Until project two. Okay, so here's a question for you guys. I've talked about relational algebra operators, and I've talked about iterators, and I've always talked about them in very separate contexts. Why? Why would, I, uh, why would you think um, it would be useful to separate uh, relational algebra operators from the iterators that implement those operators? Yeah? Uh, could you uh, say that again? Well, so the, the response is uh, we can have one iterator for all of the relational algebra operators. Um, at least the functionality of a project operator is a bit different from the functionality of, let's say, a join. Might be a little tricky to implement them all in one, but I think you might be on the right track. Why would you want to implement multiple relational operators in a single iterator? Yeah? So you could potentially play some classing tricks, maybe. Uh, OK, so having separate interfaces would make uh, what you're trying to do with each of these uh, would make it easier to do uh, different things with each of these. Uh, let me rephrase the question maybe a little. Why is, what am I trying to do with the relational algebra tree? What purpose does it serve? Hmm? Okay, so it gives us a procedure, a, a, an outline of how we want to perform the computation. And going on, looking forward to project two, it'll give us a way of reasoning about uh, how uh, ways of rewriting that order of operations that stays correct. So if I was designing something that could easily be rewritten, that could allow me to uh, reorder the operations, rebuild the tree, just uh, go, go nuts rewriting things, what are my, my design constraints on that? Okay, so it should be super independent, it should be super flexible, it should be super straightforward, super simple. Now an iterator, uh, what's my goal there? What, what's my goal when implementing an iterator? Hmm? Keep the working set small, uh, which gets me what? Or what, what is, think, hmm? uh, did, uh, what was the answer? Or? Okay, so I mean that's uh, so the um, any query that I write can be a subquery. That's something I'd like to see in both iterators and relational algebra operators. Okay, 
let me rephrase the, the question on iterators in terms of, uh, of this. What are you being graded on? Efficiency, I heard. Yes. So iterators have to be fast. Um, now, these are two very different design goals. Uh, flexibility and efficiency are typically kind of um, at opposite ends of the spectrum. Now, you can implement both of these in the, using the same set of classes. Uh, but the reason that I didn't do that in the reference implementation and what I encourage you to do is to implement them as separate classes simply because there is a whole bunch of optimization work, a whole bunch of pre-computation uh, work that it makes sense to do in the iterators. Uh, for example, the, the simple example of this is, <coughs> excuse me, in projection, you need to know what the schema of the input is. And in order to know what the scheme of the input is, um, I need to compute what the scheme is from all of the, the child operators. Now, if I reorder my operators a little bit, that schema might change. And because of that, that, makes, that means I need to recompute the entire thing from scratch. And that's going to be a pain in the butt. So when optimizing your code, you, you want a data structure that's flexible, that is adaptive, and when implementing an iterator, you want something that's fast and efficient. So I would encourage you to separate uh, the execution from this kind of logical intermediate representation that you can use to, uh, to optimize things later on. OK. Um, Here's a quick reference slide, uh, or two quick reference slides. They're basically here so that you can uh, get at them in the presentation. By the way, thank you to uh, the, the people who noted that, um, that uh, the slideshow online for uh, lecture five was broken. Uh, that's been fixed. The, uh, you know, th this is basically the, order of op the correct order of operations for uh, translating select statements into relational algebra. You start with the sources, the from item, the joins. Uh, you apply the where clause on top of that. If there's any aggregation, you do that. Uh, if there's any having clause, you do that. Uh, then projection at the, at the very end. And finally, order by distinct and limit. And if you have a union, well, you compile each select statement independently and union them all at the top. OK. So uh, we're out of time. Um, one other reference slide, again, grabbed from earlier in the, uh, the term. So any questions? Yes. What's the expected output? Oh, st uh, standard out, system.out.println. Yeah. Oh, uh, what happens when you have relations in a, uh, when you have queries nested in the from clause. Uh, I don't believe any of the example queries use that, and I am fairly certain that throughout the rest of the term we'll be rewriting queries so that they don't use nested uh, select statements. But if you wanted to support that, um, what is a relation? Uh, uh, sorry, what is a relation? Uh, a relation is an operator. What is, what is a select, uh, if I translate a select statement or a select body, what does that give me? It gives me another relation. So I can, whether I plug in R over here or whether I, whether I plug in whatever uh, translating a select statement gives me, just some black box, doesn't really matter. Um, so in this particular case, it's not that difficult to, to re-implement, but uh, you won't be required to. Any other questions? So this is not uh, no, you're not required to process select statements in the from clause. Um, all of the queries will be rewritten. Uh, Excuse me, um, correction, you may be expected to process select statements in the from clause. You won't be expected to process select statements anywhere else. Uh, yes, you won't be expected to uh, handle select in the where, 
uh, or in any of the uh, select items. Yes. Ah, uh, if the query de uh, if the query has an order by statement, um, order is relevant. You will lose 2.5 uh, points if the order is incorrect. Uh, if the if there is no order by statement, uh, the grader will ignore uh, order. It'll just just output. All, it'll make sure that all of the tuples are output and that you haven't missed any. But it, the order doesn't matter. All right. Um, I think we need to get going. Uh, if there are any other questions, uh, swing by down here and see everyone on Friday. <laughs>